Good day and welcome to Tech Tips and Fixes. My name's Ron. So today I have a project on the bench that's um, probably not all that uh, high-tech or sophisticated, but it is an opportunity to fix something that I have kicking around the house here. I have this old Sony clock radio. I've had it for many years. Uh, it's uh, worked very well. But uh, recently I've been noticing a few little things that uh, are not quite right with it. And uh, I went to reset the time the other day and found that the uh, time setting buttons were not responding. And so I'm assuming that after it uh, has been around for so long, some of the switches and controls in this little uh, clock radio are probably dirty or oxidized and probably need to be cleaned up. So uh, I'm going to open the thing up, take a look, and probably spray some contacts, and we'll see if we can get it working a little better than it was. Is that quite often this kind of equipment uh, will have uh, the screws labeled or indicated by a small uh, arrow by each screw that is the primary screw that you need to take out in order to uh, open it up. screws that um, have those arrows indicating that's what you have to open up to look at them. I also noticed that there's a little panel here that has a screw. It doesn't have an arrow but it says pull down here and uh, I'm assuming that this is probably a backup battery or a battery to re uh, retain the memory of the clock and I know that this hasn't been um, changed in probably 20 years. I've never really uh, opened that up, but I'm assuming it's probably, this battery is probably dead. And you can see right there that that is a 2032, CR2032, that's pretty common uh, flat battery. And I'm going to test it, I have a little battery tester here that uh, uh, this one's a quite a nice little battery tester because it uh, can test uh, a lot of different kinds of batteries, including these flat ones. So let's just put that in there. It touches the side and the back of it. And that's interesting. This battery looks like it is good. So why do we use battery testers anyways? Why not just use a multimeter and measure the voltage? If you know the voltage of the battery that it should be, you should be able to just measure it with a regular voltmeter. Um, but that's not always the case. If your battery is fully charged, uh, your meter is going to tell you the right uh, voltage. If that battery is fully discharged, the meter will tell you that. But if it's partially discharged, you will not always know just using a multimeter because a multimeter has a very high input impedance and there will be a surface voltage of that battery that will indicate that it appears to be good whereas its capacity really isn't there. If you uh, then use that battery and put it under load, the actual voltage will drop as soon as it's under load. This um, can be explained using um, internal resistance of the battery is another way to look at it. So a good battery tester, what it basically does is puts that battery under load. Um, not extreme load, but somewhat under load so that when you start drawing current from the battery, uh, the voltage will drop if it's not fully charged. And uh, that can be explained by way of the internal resistance, as I said, a battery um, in practical terms is a perfect battery in series with an internal series resistance. And uh, that resistance essentially, for all intents and purposes, goes up as the battery discharges. So the battery tester uh, draws current and some of the surface voltage of that perfect uh, ideal battery inside 
will be dropped across the internal resistance and the voltage you actually measure will be less than the nominal voltage of that battery. Okay, let's see if we can open this up and get to the internals where we might be able to clean up some of those switches. front comes off. That's the key to this one. Inboard. As you can see, there's some significant dust bunnies in here. So I guess the first thing here will be to clean this up a little bit. Might as well get the dust and dirt out of it before we spray some of the switches and clean them up. I'll just use this little brush to get some of the worst of this off. Sometimes it sticks a little bit, but I think I'm going to take it out to my garage and blow it out with my uh, air compressor. Of course, you want to be careful about doing something like that with some equipment because if you have too much pressure, like I wouldn't want to blow um, very hard on this speaker because you could damage a speaker. Okay, so that's better. It's nice and clean in there. Uh, so that this is the volume control pot right in here and uh, you can see it's an open pot. So this is a very inexpensive uh, radio. Uh, as you turn this knob here, you're actually turning the uh, contact on a carbon disc in there. And being that it's wide open like this, it's going to uh, oxidize a lot more quickly than uh, some of the more modern pots that are enclosed. I'm going to get some spray here and spray that pot for sure because that would be I know the uh, sound was getting a bit crackly on this so I'm just going to spray that pot this uh, spray here is uh, called neutral control cleaner uh, it's an actual cleaning agent and a little bit of lubricant in it so it's used for pots like this now it's and it does leave a bit of a residue in there so I'm just working it just so that it will um, clean itself up hopefully this is going to be enough and I may have to clean the residue off of there before I'm done but we also have uh, the band switch which is right next to that there so that switch is going to switch it between AM, FM, AM and FM band and this is an open switch um, as well so you can actually get in there with a spray and so I have to spray the contacts internally I just work it back and forth a little bit Now they have a little bit more modern switches here. These um, momentary switches are used all over, and they are pretty well sealed. So there's, it's doubtful that you could get any cleaner inside those switches. So I'm just working them. This is an interesting one over here. This is a switch, but you can tell that you're not hearing any clicking, and there's no sign of them uh, stops. And that switch is probably the one that's been given trouble because it's connected to the uh, this rotary control here that switches between a buzzer for the alarm, uh, turning on the radio, or turning it off. And you can feel the detente in each of those steps, and that's being done internally. So that, that's the control there, the actual mechanism that is controlling that switch, and it's got little stops in three positions. 
So that's that's a little bit odd. The fact that this switch doesn't have any stops in it. And that may be causing the problem. Anyways, I'm going to try and get some cleaner and it. it's got some holes on the side at the top. Let's see if I can force a little bit of cleaner in there. That's the problem with this particular contact cleaner is it really does leave more residue than I would like. And the problem with residue is that it's going to tend to um, attract dirt. Take some paper towel and try to clean up some of the residue around there a little better. I'm just going to pop the lid back on this thing and we're going to see if we can get it to work now and see if there's any change after having cleaned those contacts. I think. Okay, so we've got the radio working all of a sudden. It's not tuned. I'll tune it into a station. There's a radio on off button here. Here's the off. Okay, that's working. Turn it off. <laughs> These buttons are pretty iffy. Some of the time they're working, sometimes they're not. But it might, after working it for a while, it may be enough. You really have to push these buttons to make them make contact, so I think they are dirty inside. So eventually I did get this working right. I had to end up spraying those little switches and uh, trying to get some, uh, some of the spray inside there, and I must have been successful because after working those for a while it started working pretty good. Uh, the radio works, you can turn it on and off. One thing I did have to do was to look up the instructions online. The programming of this particular clock radio is not very straightforward and the instructions uh, did help quite a lot to uh, figure out how to get the time in and set the the alarm, since I don't use the alarm very much, uh, I didn't really remember how the alarm was set up. But the hardest thing was actually getting the time Quite set easy. So really the key thing here with this uh, clock radio was just bad switches and pots. They were just uh, dirty, oxidized from uh, operating for many, many years without any TLC. and. Um, after I cleaned those up and, and worked them out for a while, it seemed to uh, start working pretty good. So of course the last steps were just to uh, put the thing back together, get the screws back in it and give it one more test after uh, it was all back to normal. Doing a repair like this probably isn't even worth the time it takes, but when you're retired like I am, uh, fixing something like this is just kind of fun and it does save me from going out and spending thirty or forty dollars on a new clock radio. If there was something in this video that uh, you liked or was useful to you, please feel free to subscribe and like, leave a comment. I realize that this isn't uh, too high-tech, but it might be useful to some of you. So uh, that's it for today, and thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you again soon with tech tips and fixes.